All right, that's it. All right, so one of my favorite, one of my absolute favorite games to play when I was getting, when I was y'all's age. What do y'all think it was? Actually, it's 12. I remember my 12th birthday, I got my first Nintendo. Who okay. Mario. Huh? Mario. Super yeah, Mario Bros. Right? Yes. Mario Brothers. Play Contra 10 yard fight. But Mario Brothers was the game. Okay? So who are the two plumbers in Mario? Mario and Luigi. Not a big fan of Luigi. Just throwing that out there. Mario's the man. Who loves Luigi? Who loves Mario? Thank you. Thank you. I just had to prove that. So they're actually, I know besides picking up turtles and jumping on stars and dodging hammer throwing turtles, they're actually plumbers. That is their profession. That's what they do for a living. They're plumbers. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to separate the two teams. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I'm going to need one volunteer to help with this group right here. This is one team. The winning team. The winning team. No. This is the other team. The winning team. The other, the the other losers. The, no, the, the losers. Other winners. All right, so this is what we're going to do. You have, this team will take this noodle. I've got it all set up for you. However you want to set it up, it's got to touch every piece of pipe, and you got to roll your marble all the way back into the bucket. So one person will be starting it, and you got to work it down every piece of pipe. Has everybody got it? Plumbing brothers. However you want to do it, okay? Got it? Do you understand? Nod, say something. <laughs> it's gonna be hard. Alright? Y'all got it. I know the girls understand. We got this girls, come on. Alright, alright, team, let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go around out there. Take all this. Take one big noodle. One big noodle. One big noodle. Right here, right here. Here's the whole set for y'all, right here. This is the whole set for y'all, right here. Not that set, not this set, right here. All five pieces of this. All five of them. That's y'all set. Take y'all's butt. Make a line. How are y'all going to do it? Joe, Joe, you can help with this team, baby. All right, all right. I want one thing before I turn it over to Tyler. Anybody that's shooting fireworks this weekend, please be careful. Okay? They're fun. They are. I shot them when I was y'all's age. I shot them. I've shot them in the recent past few years, but they're very dangerous. Okay, be very careful around fire and fireworks. Okay. And those little sparkler things. Don't try and hit your friend with it, please. Yes, please. Now, everybody, be safe. But have a happy fourth. And don't don't forget why we celebrate the fourth. Okay. Freedom. That's right. Mark us. Mark us. I love my country. Don't forget. That's what I played it on. 
It was, had a color oh, screen. You learned how to play. It was like Super Nintendo in your pocket. Oh, what, yeah. Pretty much what it was. And then uh, it was basically like that was the, the, the flip one was, was, the, was the, 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 the Game Boy Color had that, that flip one. I remember that was a flip one. It looks like a Nintendo Switch, but older. Yeah, sure. We'll go with that. What? What version of DS is out now? Is it still the 3DS? Oh, uh, new, new Nintendo 2DS. Um, XL. New Nintendo 2DS. XL. It's XL. Uh, What's it like? Yeah, a 12 inch screen? How big is the screen on that? Uh, <laughs> just the. Yeah. Well, you can full, you full can color? Different, different That's cool. I know. I have a DS. Have the the uh, thing uh, about. So the thing about this, the Game Boy, is if y'all remember the original Nintendo DS. They were big, right? Yes. Yeah, Especially in the original Game Boy. You guys remember the original Game Boy? That thing was a huh. And you had to put four batteries in the back, and it lasted like an hour. Man, but the, the original DS too, it had the two screens. And that thing was giant. It was like it was like the SUV of handhelds, which isn't very good. Anyways, a, there's the original Game Boy right there. I learned how to play Tetris on that. Yeah, I had that. Tetris is where it was at. Anyone like Tetris? I love it. Tetris is awesome. Tetris is? I don't know. Do you know what Tetris is? That's okay. But it's very soothing. Y'all listen up. All right. So um, who knows what we've been talking about this summer? This is a rhetorical question. Hopefully y'all been paying attention. What the hell is it? What is it? What are we talking about? The fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. That's right. So which one are we on this week? Let's see if we can get it. Kindness. Kindness. Good job. Booyah. So we're talking about kindness this week, and uh, on Thursday night um, in Big Church, Keith, Keith uh, had a really good message about kindness, and um, so kindness is not always easy, um, or does it feel natural all the time? It may feel more natural when, well, maybe. I didn't, I didn't like this relation. It said in the story that your little brothers and sisters... Or your family, it's easier to show kindness to them. And I'm like, eh, I don't know about that. That's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Instead of a stranger, which may be true, which may be true. Um, but the the whole thing with kindness is that we shouldn't pick favorites, or we shouldn't have to pick and choose when it comes to kindness. We should just do it. And not only should we just do it, we should not expect anything in return. Um, and oftentimes. We, we have this mentality, like, what's in it for me? What am I going to get out of this if I give this person money? Or if I help this person with this chore? Or whatever, what, what, what am I going to get out of it? And our kids do that, and you guys do that. I do that, right? We think, what, what can I get out of this if I help, um, you know, my wife with dishes or I help clean the yard? What's, what's in it for me kind of thing? So, um... There's a story of kindness that uh, I actually could relate to this story that was in the script. Um, so Mario Kart, who's played Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo? What? Super Nintendo, what's that? Super Nintendo Mario Kart um, was awesome. It was like, I played the it was so good. And, and this was before the all the characters were balanced. They, there was one clear cut winner in Su Super Mario Kart on Super Nintendo, and it was Koopa. I played Koopa Troopa was the best. Carter in there, and my brother, wow. and me, and my stepbrother, were my, I have a twin brother, so we're the same age, and then my stepbrother is a year older than me, we played Mario Kart, Super Nintendo Mario Kart, religiously, and all the time, and my brother had, um, I don't know if they have the Ghost Ghost House tracks on any of the new Mario Karts, yeah. anyways, there's this track, Ghost House 1 or something like that, and we'd always try to beat my brother, well, my little brother, I have a little brother that's six years younger than me, and he, um, also liked to play Mario Kart, except we did not like him playing with us because he was our little brother. So we were not being kind to him, but he would always come and ask us to play, and of course we would tell him no, and then of course we would get in trouble um, because mom was like, let Joseph play, Joseph gets to play, it's his. And then we're like, mom, it's our Super Nintendo, and you know, our mom's like, quit being selfish, I'm sure you guys, none of you have heard that, right? No. no. We heard, I all heard perfect it. children in here. I heard it. Yeah, especially those with siblings. You never hear it. You guys are just perfect children. My yeah. siblings yeah. here, right? Your siblings it's not here. Me. That's funny. So we so we had an opportunity, me, we, my brother, my brothers and I. Um, me and my brothers? What's correct there? Me and my brothers. I think my I don't know. My brothers and I. Brothers and we. So um, we we had an opportunity to show Joe 
my little brother, kindness, and we we didn't. We made the decision not to. Instead of doing the right thing and letting Joe play a video game, which really doesn't mean anything. It's just entertainment. We we decided not to. Just decided not to. So that that uh, gets us into um, our story today. So uh, I was thinking of um, ways of that I've been kind lately. Um, and I had I came up with two examples. So one thing I hate like more than anything in the world is laundry. I hate laundry. I'm, I don't know if any of the adults in here can relate. I think laundry is like a chore from the devil. It's just terrible. It's just not a fun chore. Um, it piles up. And so when Kristen is working late, or my, my, my wife Kristen, um, she's working late, and there's something extra I could do, either sit on the couch or fold laundry, I'm like, man, I would just rather chill right now. But instead, i got to tell myself, okay, I can do this chore. This would be very helpful. And then not expect anything in return. And then at work, I worked in uh, IT at the University of West Georgia, and just last week, this girl came up there, a student. I don't, I don't work with the students any, um, but they tell us if a student comes up and they're, and, and you're available to help, you can be available, essentially. And so she came up to the help desk, it's right outside my door, the help desk, and my back sits to it. And so she comes up there, no one's at the help desk, they were in a meeting, so I go out there to help her. And she was uh, trying to turn in an assignment, but it was it was due the day before, but her teacher gave her a grace period, um, let her turn it in a day late. She was trying to upload a video to um, something, some tool they use for the education classes at the, at the campus. So I was able to get that uploaded for her and help her so she wouldn't have the trouble again. So that was that that made me feel good about myself, and I thought, well, that's that was kind. And um, you know, when you do stuff like that, you really have to tell yourself. Don't expect anything back. Just don't, especially from a college student who's trying to just get her work done. Like that's all she cared about. So I just want to get my assignment turned in. It's a summer course. It's important. I just got to get it done. So um, I uh, want to ask you guys a question. Who, who in your life do you have trouble showing kindness to? Go ahead, Carson. Well, bullies, but but I have trouble showing kindness to a. People who will make fun of me because I'm different, so I just try to keep my mouth closed so I won't say anything. Mm -hmm. That's that's okay. a that's a great answer. What about you, Kate? Honestly, it's my brother. He he can get really annoying sometimes. He interrupts me again. To talk about it. Yeah, that's tough. What about you, Taylor? My brothers. Brothers also. Carson, this is gonna be good. Who? 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 Clara. Clara? It's so mean. She, she's mean? Yeah. Yeah? What about you, Tyler? I have the same brother. Your little brother? Yeah. See, he's a little brother, isn't he? Yeah. Little brothers will be tough. I'm the little brother. I'm the younger Yeah. Kid. What about you, Grace? I'm the younger sister. I got beat up a lot because I have six brothers. Wow. Well, now you're well protected because you have all those brothers. No. No? Please back off. Exactly. You protect them? No. <laughs> they don't protect me, and I don't protect them. So it's tough to be kind to those. Those examples those are great examples first, so thank you for sharing. But it is tough to be kind to those that hurt you or are mean to you. Um, it's really against just the way we think in general. You know, it's how do you be kind to someone who's not kind to you? That's, that's really tough to deal with. Um, so um, we're going to look in the New Testament today. Uh, so Jesus, um, at the point where we're at in this story, Jesus had already done tons of miracles that involved kindness. Um, somebody help me out. What, what were some of those, do you think, that involved kindness? Go ahead, just shout them out. I would, just, um, I would have to say all of them because in every situation that he did a miracle, he was doing it to help someone else. Yeah, that's right. So which, what, were, what were those? Let's be specific. What were some of those specific examples? Go ahead, just yell them out. Healing a blind man. Healing a blind man. Uh, the boy and his bread. Oh, uh, feeding the five hundred was the was the boy and his bread. Yep. Bread he let that dude walk on water. Yep. Helping him out. Go ahead. Making the guy who couldn't walk walk. Like yep. just saying, stand water up. That was pretty wine. cool. What was that one? Water and the wine. Yeah, water and the wine. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So he did a lot of amazing things, right? He was very kind in all the things he did. And did Jesus expect anything in return? 
In fact, what did Jesus do with those moments? That he, he taught in those moments. He was very teachable in those moments. He, he would use those miracles to teach a lesson. What were those? Sometimes um, he had stories that he would tell. What were those stories called? Parables. Uh, there we go, parables. So um, this one, we're going to get into one in just a minute. So uh, let's look at, you got Luke 10, 25 up there? Up, uh, somewhere? All right, somebody read that for me. I'll read it. Go ahead. So, Hold on, stop. Do you have Luke 25, 10, 25? No, but Okay. I got it. I got it on this sheet. I'll read it. Who was reading 29? Okay, I'll let you get there in just a second. All right. So, a man, he asked Jesus. This is uh, what it says. This is exactly what happened on this occasion. Um, some wanted to test Jesus because they were skeptical of what they had seen and heard. Skeptical of uh, all the miracles. So, Luke 10, 25 uh, says, This is exactly what happened. A man who was an expert in the Old Testament laws tested Jesus with a hard question. He asked, What must I do to receive eternal life? And Jesus responds by asking the expert what he thought. So the man continued saying, Love the God with love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, love him with all your strength and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So Jesus agrees with this, and then he says, Now you can put Luke 10 29 up there. But the man wanted to make himself look good. So he asked Jesus and so he asked Jesus, and who was my neighbor? So, um, who is your neighbor? Everybody in the world. Like it doesn't you don't have to live with Simon. That's right. Just and your neighbor. Recorded. Everyone. They can be five houses down, five miles away, five light years away. <laughs> five light years away. It's be another galaxy, right? Mm. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. Well, they're in another galaxy, they're not your neighbor? Well, it actually is. That's true. All right. There you go. So everyone is your neighbor. And, and Shannon talks about that, too. Um, he'll, he'll ask, who's your neighbor? And the response is everyone. You just, you don't get to pick and choose who is your neighbor, right? You, and, and we do that. I do that. Everyone does that. We, we, we want to help those we feel like we can help. And then there are people that we see and we judge and we're like, they don't need our help. And we, and, but that, but that person, according to what we just read, that person is our neighbor. So, and we should show them kindness. So, I'm going to share a story. Um, and I'm going to read it from here because it makes it uh, easier to follow along. This is um, the story of the Good Samaritan, but I do need some help from some of you guys. I need, I need a Mario. Who wants to be Mario? Me, 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 me. Okay, you can come be Mario. I need a Princess Peach. Elsa. Ellie. <laughs> that, was, that was just too cute. All right, I need a Luigi. Who wants to be Luigi? Chase, come on, Chase, you can be Luigi. Come on. I need a Oompa Loompa. Aw, thank you. I need a Oompa Loompa. And I need the best, the beast. Bowser. Who wants to be Bowser? Carson wants to be Bowser. Yeah. This Carson. Carson Pullen. All right. All my. That's a lot of mustache. Over here. If you're not Mario, go to the right. Alright, Mario, 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 I need you to walk down the road. I'm Chase. And Gracie, my Oompa, Loompa, what are those things called? Oompa! Oompas? Oompas? I thought they were Oompa. 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 I got Oompa. 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 You gotta come beat Mario up, okay? No, I gotta jump on. We always tell you the most. Right. Yeah. Okay, as I read this, I'll read you ready. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on. Alright, you'll hear, you'll hear your cues, so just listen. Alright, here we go. <laughs> Once upon a time, a certain mustache plumber by the name of Mario, was making his way through the Mushroom Kingdom on his lonesome. He had been traveling a long while, all the way from Toad Town, in fact, and was, oh, there we go, and was tired and ready to be home. However, he was making his way along the path. Come back, Mario. Come back this way, son. So can, our Oompa can come out. Can see Mario. However, he was making his way along the path. He was jumped by a pack of Goombas. Get him, Goombas! Ah! Jump him! Yeah! Oh, ah. Alright, Mario, you you're, you just turned small. You lost your mushroom power. You're struggling. You're struggling. Okay, thank you, Goomba. Good job. They took him by surprise and really laid the hurt on and took all of his coins, power-ups, and left him there by the side of the road. Without any mushrooms or fire flowers, Mario was helpless. He lay there on the side of the path, hoping someone would come lend him aid. Mario was alone. After a while, lo and behold, who would come down the road 
Yeah. 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 favorite gal, Princess Peach. Woo woo! Mario's ally, you can sit up Mario if you want. Mario's ally and ruler of the Mushroom Kingdom. Mario called out to her as she walked by, and Peach took notice. Hey Peach. She clearly saw Mario needed some help, but she only passed to move to the other side of the road, then she kept on walking. Keep on walking. Get on out Oh, there. boo. She saw Mario's distress and turned her head, continuing on her way to the castle. Maybe she didn't want to get her princess dress dirty. Fair. Fair. She is a princess. All right. So, Mario, once again, was alone. Mario, I don't know what you what you did to Princess Peach's Kool-Aid, but, man. I so, did nothing. She just walked right by you and didn't help you. It's crazy. Sometime later, another traveler came down this path. And Mario shouted for help. Oh. Mario shouted for help. Ah, there we go. Hey. Looking down the way to see who was headed his direction. To his surprise, it was his Luigi. favorite brother, Luigi. Luigi. Here comes Luigi. Mario waved his arms as much as he could and asked for assistance from his brother. Luigi. As Luigi approached, he clearly saw help. Mario had a disgusted look on his face. The same look Mario gets when he hears a toilet to an Help me, my brother. To his shock, his brother, too, walked right on by. Oh, the humanity. First the princess, now his own brother. Mario watched in dismay as Luigi sauntered down the path to the castle, never giving Mario a second thought. It's cold, bro. That's cold. Once again, Mario was alone. Even more time passed, and Mario had all but given up hope. But then, thundering footsteps plotted down the path. The earth shook and the trees quivered as none the other the great <laughs> No, Bowser is making thunder and footsteps. P H A T man. His greatest enemy the the earth shook and the trees quivered as none the other the great Bowser stepped into view. Bowser, Mario's mortal foe, his greatest enemy, scourge of the mushroom kingdom, saw Mario lying there helpless by the side of the road. And the great spiky Koopa King did the unthinkable. Bowser knelt down beside Mario and helped him to his feet. He carried Mario all the way to the castle. He carried Mario. <laughs> I don't piggyback. He carried Mario. Oh, okay, piggyback. Yep. He carried Mario <laughs> all the way to the castle and gave him a few spare coins to make up for those that had been taken from him. He even gave him a power up mushroom to put a little pep in his step. As Bowser left, he said he'd offer more assistance upon his return if needed. Mario's friends had turned his no their noses up at him, but his enemy took the time to put in the effort to help him out. All right, so the, this answer, thank you guys. Keep our character. Thank you very much. Just put those back up there. Appreciate it, great job. All right, so I'm gonna ask a really obvious question. Before you to you guys. I do good. Who, who was the one that showed him mercy? Bowser, only because he wanted to show me. Uh, you think so? Yes, because it, it, like all the time, every time, like at, like all the time, enemies only help you up so that they can kill you one day. So oh. they give you money. That's true. Here's, here's so that they make, so that they raise your health high, and then they crush your soul. Sometimes every enemy, not really an enemy. Yeah, maybe Bowser's just, you know. So we now play Mario 64 where he is. Listen up, listen up. So who, uh, yeah. what story was that in the Bible? Somebody, somebody pick that up? The Good Samaritan. Good Samaritan. Y'all listen. So who knows, uh, who knows how good, good of friends Samaritans and Jews were? Like they were best friends? No, they hated each other. They hated each other, right? But here, but so this, uh, in, the, in the story of the Good Samaritan, right, this Samaritan helps this Jew up. He takes him to a hotel. He makes sure he gets better. And not only does he make sure he gets better, he gives him extra money. And he, he, and he comes back and checks on him. And these guys hate each other. All right, it's so we think, right? So we think. So we think. So it's, it's an amazing story, this parable. But, um, you know, it's crazy to think that his brother, Mario's brother, Luigi wouldn't help him. Yeah. Or the princess wouldn't help him. Princess Peach. How many times does Mario say Princess Peach luck? Like? Um, a lot, how actually. Many, how many versions of Mario are there? Level, like, in every game. Yeah. In right. every game. In every game. So, so and Mario does it just to protect the kingdom. He doesn't. I don't think Mario expects anything in return. 
Just like the Samaritan can expect an angry return from this Jew. How many of these are my Yeah. That and coins. Yeah. So the reason that um, this, this story is shared by Jesus, this Good Samaritan short story, is to show, it, of course it's a story, it's an exaggeration, but it's to show that love and kindness should spread outside of our own community. Right? It shouldn't just be in our homes, it shouldn't just be at our schools, um, and even at school it's, it can be bad. Right? There's bullying, we all know that, there's bullying, there's kids get picked on all the time, beat up all the time. Um, and we try to do, as, as parents and teachers, we try to stop it, but it just happens. And so, uh, outside of your own four walls, if you will, there should be kindness given all the time. And it's hard to do, but you have to tell yourself in your head that, you know, this is what, this is essentially what Jesus would do. This is what, if I'm going to live a life like Christ, that's what I need to do also. So, um, our key question for today that we're going to think about in a small group is this one. How can you be kind even when it's hard? So I want you to think about, during worship, I want you to think about those people in your life that you have trouble being kind to. And maybe it's somebody um, like your brother or your sister. Or maybe it's some friend that hurt you in some way. Maybe they don't know about it, though. Maybe they don't know they hurt you. And you know, that conversation needs to be had with that person. And same for us adults, right? There's people in our lives that affected us one way or the other. And so um, think about that as we get into our small group. So I'm going to pray, and then um, we are going to sing some songs. Who's coming up? Tanya? All right. So thanks for listening. Appreciate the uh, characters today, and uh, let's pray. Father God, thank you for uh, your word. God, thank you for um, the fruit of the Spirit and just uh, the message of kindness, God, that it doesn't um, pick and choose, it's, and it doesn't expect anything in return. So, God, I just ask um, that we show kindness and that uh, to others and, and uh, to everyone, God. So just be with us in this time of worship. And it's in your name we pray. Amen.